first time since 1945 that I am back on German soil. It's, it, it's bittersweet. I was liberated near Danzig, so that's also Germany, and my father died, was killed in Dachau, one of the first concentration camps. I can't yet find the right words to say what I feel, but I feel that I'm very lucky. And especially when I see the diverse group that's with us, that everybody came to learn what happened to us. I am one of the younger survivors from Kaunas, Lithuania, that went through the concentration camp and everything. I never encouraged my mother to talk, and I feel very bad about it. My mother had a wonderful life. I didn't want her to relive everything. Kids are very resilient. She was in her prime, and she lost everything. I would not speak and not talk about. I don't know. I can't tell you why. From 2001, I belong to the Dominion Institute. I belong to the Holocaust Center. And you can't shut me up. That's it. Here we are. My mission in life is now that I am retired. I go from school to school. Wherever they send me, I have never sent no. I go to Catholic schools especially. I go to Jewish schools. I spoke in synagogues. I spoke in churches. So when I heard that wonderful non-Jews want to go on a trip to Berlin and to Poland and to all the concentration camps, and especially Auschwitz, when I am going to stand up and say, ha, you didn't get me, I could not say no. I'm not the only one. There is Pinchas, who is also the survivor. And he will tell in his perspective, and I will tell in my perspective what happened. My father's side were German Jews. My maiden name is Schmidt. So there were German Jews, and there was very, very learned and very, uh, and then nobody's left. The purpose of the March of Remembrance and Hope is to educate people from all backgrounds, all faiths, all cultures about the Holocaust, about um, genocide in general, and about the need for us to coexist in this world and to stand up for others when horrendous things are happening to communities and groups across the world. Now the final solution is a term that for the first time is used around 1938. Uh, and it's a term that has the, the meaning changes over time. In 1938, it actually means getting the Jews out of Germany. The problem the Germans have is that as they start conquering Europe, instead of getting fewer Jews, they in fact get more Jews. Beautiful setting yes. for the worst decision. Yeah. Look at it. Look, look at this. Look at that structure. Look, 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 look at the structure. Look at it on top. Uh, yeah. oh. See, Kaunas, and this is Lithuania, Kaunas, and, and Kovna, the Jews call it Kovna, and that's Vilna. In 1941, June 1941, I was nearly seven years old. The Jews were right away singled out. Proclamations came out. You had to leave your home, carry something in a suitcase, in a wheelbarrow, in a baby carriage. So I remember my mother pushing one dress on top of the other that we should have, we should take it with. We moved into the, the Kaunas ghetto. 
four or five families in a, in, in a one little room, very, very, very crowded. I am going to be 75. I still think myself that I'm young. But there's a lot of the survivors who are much older and they are passing away. And we won't have any witnesses. And I wanna make sure that those young people tell their children and tell their grandchildren what hatred did when one person decided to get rid of a whole nation. Life was going on down there near the railways and the Jews were killed just a little bit up the hill. They were sent away to concentration camps. The Nazis had a lot, a lot on the plate, right? There's a few things that have to be done. Eventually what they wanted, when they talked about races and hierarchy of races, the Jewish race, which is the lowest race, needs to be exterminated, needs to be killed, should not exist. 1944, when orders again came out, the ghetto is being liquidated. My father, my mother, and me. We were loaded on, again, on the pretext that we're going to go to a much better place and they're going to give us more food, loaded on cattle cars. I don't remember how many days we traveled, three or four days, I don't know. I know there wasn't enough food, there wasn't enough water. When they opened up the cattle cars, we were already in Poland. They separated the women and the other leftover children that were still before in the ghetto to one side and the men to another side. And that was the last time I saw my father. Not all survivors are able for a variety of reasons to do a program like March of Remembrance and Hope. It's demanding physically, it's demanding emotionally, it's demanding intellectually. And there are survivors who have, particularly as they get older, um, a, a real passion and a real need to pass on their own stories and to teach and to explain not only the horror, but also the hope that's so implicit in, in their lives and what they represent. And you're shining, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. You're heading to, a, to the promised land or something. I would have never thought that I would be victorious in Berlin. I don't know what I expected. I expected to feel maybe more angrier than, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel victorious. Good. I feel Amazing. very victorious. We made it, and he did not make it. Pinchas has been involved with March of Remembrance and Hope since 2005 and he, I think every year, has allowed himself to become more and more open to his own experience. I think he comes back because as much as he knows how much he enriches the students, I believe that he's enriched by the students.
By the way, Pinchas was living somewhere, when he arrived from Lodz, in the map somewhere around this area over here. And we are right now over here. It's not too far. It's about a 15, 20 minute walk from where, where we are. But well, I've been back many times, you know, uh, s at least five, six, seven times. And, um, you know, this is my birthplace. I was born here and I, and I had some of my happiest childhood years here before the war. So now it's a place from which I was I I like chased out yes. of and, and, de and therefore it's become a strange place. It, it's both part of me and yet it's both not part of me. You see, look, there is a sign well, which you wouldn't have been able to see years before. The crescent at Mogendovit and a cross. Yeah, you would never allow it. It shows you there is a progression. Things progressed here. I don't know no one else except Pinchas that has been to the Omschlag but tells the story. There are a lot of testimonies but a person that's still alive today that has been here, there are very few because the majority of them went to Treblinka, most of them. So uh, we will go with Pinchas and, 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 uh, and hear his, uh, his story. these buildings, I don't know what they look like now, but last year they were still very, you know, more or less the way they were, and this is where they chased us up, you know, the, the, the stairs, and we stand in these little, stayed in these little rooms, we stayed there for two nights, and this is where it all happened, and then further along, the, further along, as you look, there's the kind of wall now, there were the, the cattle trucks were there, and they, they chased us with, with, with clubs and, and, and with rifle butts all the way into the trucks. This is the way of suffering and death in, between 1942 and 43, which happened in the Warsaw Ghetto by Hitler's death camps for 300,000 Jews. Now, okay, it tells you what happened, but this place was so horrific. This place was so terrible that I think it should have been left wild and there should have been just the wagons and they should have been overgrown and the old building should have been left to be disused yeah. and it should have been, you know, and people shouldn't even have been able to go in but only to see it from the outside. Yeah. This is sanitizing it and I just, I can't stand it. Oh. It actually makes me feel, make me feel, when I come here it makes me feel bad. You see, Justin, what you did is very commendable. When I was in trouble, when my people were getting killed, nobody cared. Nobody had a rally. Nobody, no government, they knew about it. They say Roosevelt did not know, he knew about it. Nobody bombed their railway tracks to the crematoriums. Do you understand? <laughs> <laughs> we were taken to Stutthof also a concentration camp. When we got there, we were very lucky. The ovens, the crematoriums were not working. I remember seeing mounds of clothes, mounds of shoes, mounds of high glasses, mounds of suitcases. And they told us that we should go into the showers and everything was taken away. After the shower, my mother says to me, whatever I do, be quiet. She took me to a mount of clothes, and I'll never forget, a shoe with a heel she gave me, a skirt, I don't remember the color of the skirt, but I remember a brown jacket, and with some unmentionables, stuffed me in the right places and said to me again, Zai still, means in Yiddish, be quiet. Whatever I do, be quiet. And we had to register. And when we went to register, she told them that I am from 1932, that I am 12 years old. 10 years old is still a baby. 12 years old can be Arbeitsfähig, can be, it means, can be a worker. And they believed. whole idea that you get increasingly oppressed, the 
it's almost as if you're being buried by the big piece of concrete. Life in the ghetto was a paradise compared to a concentration camp. You were watched constantly. We slept on bunks, one on top of each other. You were locked up at night. You got only a ration, soup and a piece of bread. This is where they threw us in where there was the infection was. And then you came out and then you stood under these showers. And these showers always let out water. My sister got separated from my mother and she was pushed towards the children and my mother went, was pushed towards the women. And suddenly as we were standing there waiting to know what is happening, I saw my sister running towards my mother and she had this long, long braid. She hugged my mother, took her around, and from that time onwards, despite the fact that I can remember every member of my family's face and friends and others, I have been not been able to conjure up my twin sister who was part of me, part of my flesh, part of my blood, I cannot see her face. Whenever I think of my sister, which is reasonably often, all I see was the blonde braid. And I was told that they were murdered the same day that my father was murdered. So basically, I lost my whole family the day we arrived in Maidanik. It hit me very hard when Pinchas was talking, because when I speak, I am not that, uh, I try maybe to cover certain aspects of my life in the ghetto, the concentration camp, the labor camps, and he was very eloquent and very descriptive, and it really hit me. And I guess after he spoke, I guess they say I lost it, but I was immediately surrounded by this wonderful people. And Devon, she was holding on to me for dear life. And that was a very healing process. I don't think I would ever come back here alone. Never. Shush, my little one. Shush, my cherished one. Do not tell that you are a Jew. My brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers are being shipped all together, shipped together to be martyred. Shush, my darling child. Shush, my little heart. Do not tell that you are a Jew. as du bist while Brüder, Schwester, Tate, Mammen, fuhlen alle zu zusammen, fuhlen alle zu versammen, schweig, Kinderle, schweig, Herzele, such nicht euch, 
as the vista ye. So I actually made this tape to commemorate my sister. This is why you are so dear to me, because you will remember what happened to my people when I am long gone. I am giving you a forever homework to remember because you might be the leaders of the world. You are our future. It doesn't matter, a mosque, a synagogue, a church. It doesn't matter. We rely on you that it should never happen again, Rwanda, anywhere. Anywhere in the world, it shouldn't happen what happened to me. Everybody's life has plateaus, things that are accomplished. I have survived the war. I had a good education. I had a fantastic position as an accountant and then as a, a junior kindergarten teacher. And I got married to one of the nicest men. So those are all achievements and those are all wonderful things. And then I had four children and wonderful grandchildren. But I have to add, meeting this group has been one of the highlights of my life.